December 20th, 2021. On Hunga Tonga in the Southern Pacific Ocean, an eruption begins. Volcanic activity doesn't stop for weeks and then reaches a powerful and wild climax. Hunga Tonga, Hunga Ha'apai, is a submarine volcano, part of the highly active Kermitic Tonga subduction zone. Geological formations like this one can be found nearly everywhere on Earth, and they are scenes of unimaginable geological terror. A subduction zone is a place where a massive tectonic plate, often the size of an entire continent, moves towards a neighboring plate. And as it does, the heavier plate dives beneath the other one and sinks into the mantle. Rates of subduction are typically measured in centimeters or even millimeters per year. But those tiny changes cause huge impacts in the form of earthquakes and harsh volcanism in the overriding plate. This actually is the main process by which lava and chemical elements, including carbon, are moved between the Earth's surface and its interior. The conditions in the subduction zones are extreme. We're talking about high temperatures and immense pressures. Also, because it's so deep into the Earth's surface, there's no sunlight, so no photosynthesis either. You just do not expect to find life under these circumstances. However, it turns out that a new study involving Metu's marine scientist, Dr. Mustafa Yujel, has actually shown that there is, in fact, a large microbial ecosystem living within these impossible environments. One which can even help us humans in an unpredictable way. In a multidisciplinary expedition supported by the Deep Carbon Observatory Initiative, designed and led by Dr. Karen Lloyd and Dr. Donato Giovanelli, Researchers have collected samples from the microbial communities brought to the surface from 21 hot springs across a 200-kilometer section of northern and central Costa Rica. Dr. Mustafa Yujel and his colleagues analyzed those samples to identify the biogeochemical exchanges across the subduction zone. And what they found was a correlation between the amounts of dissolved organic carbon and dissolved inorganic carbon in their samples, suggesting that more organic carbon was produced where more inorganic carbon was available. And that points us to a group of special organisms called chemolithoautotropes. Chemolithoautotropes are microbes that use chemicals chemo from rocks, litho, to make food, autotropes. Their cuisine varies widely, but some of them are perfectly fine to eat the carbon generated by geological processes to feed themselves. And when they're full, they convert that inorganic carbon into carbonate materials and lock most of them up underground. So in a way, they're like trees. But instead of using sunlight, they use chemical processes involving electron transfer. More interestingly, the team calculated an estimate of the amount of sequestered carbon that would otherwise escape into the atmosphere. According to the researchers, the process results in a projected decrease of up to 22% in the amount of carbon being transported to the Earth's mantle. This number makes you wonder. If these subsurface microbes are so good at sucking up most of the carbon dioxide coming from below, couldn't they help us with the carbon problem that we've created here on our own atmosphere?